Hello YouTube, we are live. Uh, I'm Mick Solomons, the developer of the Starting Strength app, and alongside me, as usual, Starting Strength coach Alex Koseri. Hey everybody. Am I pronouncing that right? Is it Koseri or Kosari? Um, I wish I knew. My, <laughs> my own father says it in both ways. So I don't know. I don't know. Does that raise any questions? <laughs> have you taken that? Yeah. You... Both, both are loosely acceptable. Right. Both are loosely acceptable. <laughs> okay, but. gotcha. And uh, Wichita Falls Athletic Club coach, Rusty Holcomb. G'day, Rusty. Hey, y'all. How's everything? How you How's everything, Wichita Falls? I like your little backdrop Wichita you got Falls. there. Your Lord and Savior. Wait, wait, there's, a, there's no riots. So I think we're doing all right. Can you just move your head a bit to the side so we can see your background properly? <laughs> it's beautiful. It is beautiful. It is. You are slowly morphing into him. You realize. <laughs> Another <laughs> few weeks. Is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's just uh, let's rep into the uh, form checks. We've got a few to get through today. Uh, the first one is uh, Doctor Zach Manwaring, deadlift. Who is a doctor? He's a doctor. Whoops! I've uh, already messed that up. Let's get it back, Zach. All right. There we go. Apparently, he's a doctor. That's what it said on his email anyway. Well, you got to email transcripts in or it doesn't count. So. <laughs> well, he's not wearing a mask. So uh, how, much, how much of a <laughs> doctor is he? Him. <laughs> That's an interesting contraption in the foreground there. What, what is that? Is that a... I have no idea. I think that's um, a squat uh, rack. It's, yeah, it's, it's a safety bar. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, but it's outside of the squad. Oh, rack. it's the back of a. That's the back of a rack. Yeah, mm. I thought he was lifting it out like, uh, a mortuary or something. Yeah, these <laughs> deadlifts aren't aren't that bad at all, actually. Um, I think he needs to do a better job at setting his low back. Um, as soon as he starts pulling, it starts to give way. Um, and that could also be because of his belt. He has one of those belts that it's like an old school weightlifting belt where it's big in the back and then real small in the front. Um, I would get a. a at least a three inch belt all the way around. Um, that might help a little bit. Um, but yeah, definitely set your back a little bit harder. Um, everything else is looking pretty good. Um, what do you think, Alex? Um, I think you're throttling the descent a little bit more than you have to. That'll probably tire you out whenever you get another set of plates on the bar. So try and work that habit out now. Um, think about it like a controlled fall. If it's an, if it's an artifact of your environment, then you're just going to have to deal with it and do a small tempo deadlift on the way down. Um, but generally, you just want to assist it to the ground. You don't want to take too much energy up um, because you get a little bit slower on that descent as your reps go on. So that may be a habit to worry about three months down the line. But otherwise, yeah, I agree with Rusty. These are pretty solid. Yeah. Um, get some lifters. You will benefit from some lifters. Well, he's, he's a doctor. He's probably got a pair of Crocs. So uh... <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. His Crocs filled with blood. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Zach. Uh, Taylor Haberman. He's so he's, uh, he's cropped. This looks like a uh, Planet Fitness or... Oh, no, that's not that point of fitness. They wouldn't allow this at all. Really? Yeah, what does that platform oh, yeah. say on there? Something sport? Fringe sport? Can we enhance that, Mick? No, I don't enhance. know. I'm not that fancy. Enhance. I think it's not a planet fitness. Yeah. Fringe yeah. sport. Yeah. Um, uh, you want to start this one off? Uh, yeah, you're a very tall dude. Unfortunately for you, for the deadlift. Fortunately for you and the rest of your life. So you've won in many areas. So don't be too upset. <laughs> um, Women will pick him over <laughs> me and you. <laughs> exactly, yes. You can have much higher shelves than the rest of us. Um, but uh, you got a long way for the bar to travel. Um, so you have a few kind of lines of thinking behind it. Um, if you go with the standard uh, heels relatively close together, as vertical arms as you can go, um, you're going to have a hell of a long pull, and it's just going to be logistically difficult for you to uh, get your back to be set. So you may have to either accept some amount of rounding in your back and just have the intention of straightening it out as much as possible, or you could kind of do the big dude thing. And normally, you know, you'll really only see this after people are like six four and above, um, where they're taking an intentionally wider stance and the arms are coming out a little bit wider too. Um, most of your length is in your legs, so you are, you know, just a long-legged individual in addition to being tall. Um, so that may be a strategy for you to work on but that's something that you'll probably have to refine over time um but otherwise uh 
setting your back here is soft, just kind of as an artifact of your stance. Uh, the bar is forward of midfoot. Another is an artifact of the stance. So see if you can get your shins a little bit more vertical, get your hips a little bit higher in the air, and see what you can do with it. Um, this is already a pretty sufficiently heavy deadlift. Um, if those are kilo plates, if those are pound plates, uh, still definitely okay. Um, but it'll probably take a while for you to figure out what's going to work best for you in the long run. You'll have, you'll have more options than most people do, I would say. Squat. Yeah, you're watching you're... his squat video, right? No, I'm watching his deadlift. I'm on the deadlift too. Really? Yeah. Taylor. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, all the deadlift stuff. Taylor Haberman. Yeah. Yeah, I've Taylor Haberman deadlift. I've got a, oh, Taylor Haberman deadlift, right. I've been I've been showing the... Uh... Oh, no. Oh, oh yeah. No. <laughs> I was like, what are these guys Amateur talking about? It is, yeah. Long. Right, okay. I'm gonna get his, <laughs> I've been watching his squat video for... Uh... All right, anyway, we're going to get his deadlift video up now. Yeah, all right. right, short notes, Taylor. Um, <laughs> you have very long arms, uh, or very long legs, excuse me. Uh, look at the way the very tall people deadlift. You may want to try to mimic that if the standard setup is permanently just feels like crap for you. Um, if you can manage to get your lower back straight with the standard setup, go for it by all means, drive that home. If you find that just like you're grinding your head against the wall, um, look at someone, uh, maybe like Jerry Pritchett, I would say that's the most extreme example for it. Um, he takes like a very wide stance, almost like a sumo stance, still gets his arm outside of it, and he looks like he's just about as tall as you. You actually may be a little bit taller than he is. Um, so you're going to have to play around with it. You know, tall people, uh, you have a lot more muscle mass to move the bar around for the deadlift, but your stance can get a little bit wonky. Um, so try the standard setup, focus more on back extension, and then move on if you think you have to, but you may not. What do you think, Rusty? And we I have a cat. Yeah. I definitely concur. All right. Yeah, uh, no, you, you, hit it, you hit it pretty much on the head, and once he once he get once he figures out how to set his lower back better, I think his lockouts will be better. That that was um, one glaring thing to me is all, his lockouts got softer and softer as the set went on. So um, yeah, um, fix those things that uh, Alex said and uh, make sure your lockouts are nice and solid. Mm -hmm. Does that look like hook grip to you or double overhand? By the way, I can't really tell. I think it's um, just straight double overhand. That's straight double overhand. He's not hook gripping. Yeah, no, he's nice. not hook gripping. Yeah. Way to go, man. Yeah, yeah, he's got yeah. strong grip. And he's yeah. got he's got a bit of you know moving the camera when he's dropping the weight down. That's always good to see. <laughs> oh, it's such a cool it's such a cool effect. Yeah. If I'm on the uh, back side of the gym by the mirrors, it'll happen. If I'm over on the other side, it doesn't happen. <laughs> I don't know why you would not be near mirrors. You need them to work out correctly, Rusty. Well, no, I, I hate looking at myself when I work out, so I, I always have to have the mirrors behind me unless I'm forced to be on the other side. Why of the do you gym. hate what what you hate looking at yourself when you're working out? How do you yeah. how do you check see, out your pump if you can't see yourself? This is a on, this is a funny thing. Like a Alex is under the assumption that everybody likes to work out. <laughs> if I could go my entire life without lifting and just be jacked, I would do that, and I would be perfectly okay with it. <laughs> Aggressive just, amounts I of steroids, maybe. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, now we'll actually get onto Taylor's squat, which we had yeah. running. We had running for about four minutes before. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's all right. Um, I just started the first rep. Yeah, same here. <clears throat> That's the same rack from um, the, uh, oh, sorry. Um, I was going to make a pointless comment. Yeah, no, no, you go fine. ahead. You go ahead, Rusty. Yeah. Um, one thing um, I'm noticing is you're really cranking your elbows up like this and uh, really, really hard. I would definitely get your elbows down in the bottom. You're going to start developing some elbow tendonitis, maybe, uh, some shoulder pain. If you continue to crank like that, um, the entire time, um, just stand nice and tall. Squeeze your, squeeze your um, shoulder blades together with your elbows slightly elevated, and you sh you will have a shelf that will that bar can rest on. A lot of people get real nervous whenever they lower their elbows, thinking that a bar can slide off their back. It won't. Um, so bring your elbows down. That'll save your elbows and shoulders in the long run, and it'll also allow you to get your chest up a little bit harder. Um, other than that, these aren't too terribly light. You know, like we've discussed, you're a real real tall guy, um, so your knees are going to go out further than most people. Um, I would also wor worry about setting your butt back as soon as your knees break. You're kind of dropping your butt straight down. Set your set your butt back a little bit more, and you'll be good to go. What do you think, Alex? <clears throat> um, I really like these. I really like these. Um, so we know that you can keep your lower back in extension by watching these squats. 
Um, so I would again revisit, see if you can fix it on a deadlift, if not revisit the stance. Um, your wrists are a little bit rounded over at the top. They're a little bit in flexion. Um, it is better for you to keep your elbows and do a more correct position closer to your, your torso and to get a better shelf with your back and accept a little bit of wrist bend. Right? If your wrists have to bend just a tad or even, you know, let's say severely enough like that, and then you can uh, make sure that you are in good thoracic extension and uh, move your grip in a little bit, that's a totally fine trade. It'll probably solve those problems for you. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just keep sending everything backwards. Um, again, you know, like Rusty said, you're a tall guy. Your knees are just going to have to travel for a long time to get where they're going. Um, so don't be afraid to keep most of your weight on your heels here. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Taylor. Uh, we've got Scott Gamut deadlift next. We've had Scott on a few times now. Oh, I haven't seen him in a bit. Okay. Yeah. I'm never sure whether to forward through these, but anyway, it's about mm -hmm. 20 nah, seconds. I just, I just got to yeah. throw a strap, yeah. Yeah, I think you're ahead of me, Rusty, so you go ahead. Yeah. Um, spend less time getting set up. Um, whenever you set that weight down, you need to already have in your mind to get ready for that next grip. You're kind of setting the weight down and resting a little bit. Um, looks like it was just do, doing a heavy double. Um, and you got to squeeze your chest up a little bit harder. Um, you're, you're, you're very rounded in the shoulders, um, which is a technique some of you bigger guys can do. But you'll get more out of the lift if you squeeze your chest up and flatten your upper back a little bit harder. Um, looks like you're a little bit soft coming up too, a little bit of a hitch on that last one. So nice smooth pull all the way up um, and a hard lockout with a big chest. I agree. I th so, Scott, these are the best that these have looked. So I yeah. think this is either the third or the fourth video. I want to say one was a heavy one. One was like a reset down to 225. I want to say this is the third or the fourth one. Um, but these are significantly better. So uh, respect there. Way to go. Um, I'm not entirely sure you'll be able to get your back more flat than it is now. Keep intending to get it as flat as possible. But based of kind of the progress that I've seen across the videos, I think this may be a plus for you. Um, but don't get lazy about it. Keep trying to extend your back as much as possible. If it still looks a little bit rounded, just by the fact that there's a bunch of flesh and muscle back there, that's totally fine. Um, but Rusty's right about the hitching. Um, and if you're using a double overhand, this may be a little bit heavy for that, which could be another, you know, uh, reason why that lockout looks a little soft. So. All right. Bit of a bar drop on there. Don't know if you noticed that. That, that, would have, yeah. that would have got you kicked out of Wichita <laughs> I, I, Falls I, I Athletic think, Club. I think that's why he was hitching. I think he was starting to lose it a little bit okay. because of his grip. And that's that's probably why he was dropping the bar. Yeah. <clears throat> no worries. Thanks, Scotty. Good stuff, mate. Keep keep the videos coming in. Uh, Melanie. Oh, God. I'm going to butcher her name again. Sit, Sitnik. Oh, man. Sitnik. 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 This is an easy one. Sitnik. Damn Sitnik. It. All right, Melanie. Sorry. Uh, we're going to look at her. Squat or yeah, look at her squat, squat video first. Mm -hmm. The most important lift. No, she didn't submit a curls video, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> you starting or you want me to? Um, you go for it, yeah. All right. Honestly, I think these are definitely the best ones we've seen so far. Um, you're squatting a little bit deep. Um, let's see. Let's look at this next one. Yeah, I agree with Rusty. These are a little bit deep. Yeah, they're, they're I deep. rarely say that, and that's that's a little bit deep. <laughs> <laughs> they're deep, but um, from, and it's 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 hard to see a lot of angles from this head-on um, view. But your knees are going out. That's fantastic. You're holding the mat on the way up. Um, just from this angle, I think these squats are pretty damn good. Um, the the depth is the only thing that I would fix. I would come. I would I think about springing out of the bottom just a little bit sooner than what you're doing now. <laughs> Um, if you're having a hard time turning it around uh, early, if that feels like the only depth that, that you feel comfortable doing uh, or can get that bounce or spring out of, think about preserving your chest angle a little bit. If you try to stay a little bit more vertical, you won't be able to get that deep, and then that will be able to change your bounce point for you. So just think about, you know, yell the word bounce in your head as soon as you know that you get to parallel. If that doesn't work, try to pick your chest up a little bit, preserve that torso angle, and it should solve it for you anyways. Um, but yeah, if I say these are too deep, they're like seven inches. <laughs> <by starting laughs> so, move on. 
good work. Can like a little notebook there as well. Should be using the app, Melanie, but anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Notebook's fine. Uh, Melanie's deadlift video is up next. Oh, yeah. Just me, are those... The bar looks like it's a bit low, or is it... Yeah, I think those are 35s. Those yeah. don't look like the standard size plate to me. Doing deficit deadlifts. There we go. Nice. I don't know about you, Alex, but I really like these. Yeah, I think these are things you're totally fine. This is like a warm up set, though. So add yeah. like 100 yeah. pounds and we'll see what happens. <laughs> if you're, um, if you start to feel like your knees are competing for that space where your arms are at, bring your feet in just a little bit. Um, you are, uh, I wouldn't say you're wide, but you're a little bit wider than what I would set someone up with to begin with. Um, but if you feel that, those two, um, if your, your arms and your legs competing, just bring your stance in just a little bit. That should fix that problem. Other than that, these look great. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Great work, Melanie. Uh, okay. Macy squat is up next. That is some intense music in the background there, see. I don't know <laughs> if the audience can hear that music, but... I've got it playing. I've got it playing on the stream now. Okay, it's it's there. <laughs> it's definitely there. Yeah, that's good. a little too intense for me. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were a metalhead, Rusty. I thought you would have been. Oh, I am, but that that's that that just sounds like noise to me. <laughs> <laughs> what? And I'm death, sorry. And death metal, death metal makes sense to you, does it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Wichita Falls is a death metal only gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rip hates it whenever I play anything other than smooth jazz. <laughs> oh really it's okay all right just yeah. trumpet solos just out oh yeah yeah it's, that's you it take it's this one off. Off. you want me to take off okay so yeah. uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things going on here uh macy that that you really need to fix um it, you're you're you have an idea of what you need to be doing but you're kind of um, doing a um, an exaggeration of it so um in the very beginning your chest is kind of pointed down like you're, you're curling your chest down. You need to think about squeezing your chest up. Think about the bottom of your sternum and trying to point that up a little bit um, and bring your hands in. That'll give you a little bit more of a shelf for that bar to stay on. Now, as far as your descent goes, as soon as you descent, you're not moving your knees at all. You're barely bending your knees. What you're doing is just pushing your butt back and then bending over all the way, and that's how you're getting your depth. Your knees need to go forward. Um, if you hold them back too long, it's going to be real hard to get your hip drive because for hip drive, your knees have to pull back in the squat at the, in the bottom of the squat. So think about whenever you start your descent, think about hips and knees, same time, push your knees out to your toes. That's when they stop and your butt does not stop. Um, those are the two main things that I'm really noticing is get your chest up, um, fix your gaze in one spot. You're kind of moving your head as you're squatting, um, fix, point your nose at a spot and keep it there. And um, bend your knees because you're just bending over with the weight. Yeah, uh, I agree. Um, so when a lot of people will uh, say like, oh, the starting strength squat looks like a good morning, they'll mean something like this. This is yeah, a exactly. very strong good morning. Whenever you actually get your knees into this, you're going to be able to add a very significant amount of weight. So that's really cool. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, you, I would <clears> recommend for a lot of people like this, if you're self-coaching at home, use the Tubo, terribly useful block of wood, and just try to knock it across the room frankly. Um, yeah. Hit it every single time you're going on your warm-ups to make sure that you're reinforcing the fact that your knees have to punch forward over your knee. Um, if you are actively knocking it over the first few times, that's totally fine. Maybe even make that the goal for a little bit. That way you can just know your knees are getting into position. Um, and the next thing is that... Uh, so Rusty was talking about aiming your chest up, pulling that up, and your head is trying to do the same job when your head is bobbing up. Um, if you are unable to coach yourself into a position of better thoracic extension and you can't get to see anybody, it may be a good card to play to just move your gaze up straight ahead of you to kind of try to replicate that the best that you can. Um, so in the situation where, you know, someone's having a hard time with thoracic extension, um, it's it's a it's a good card to have to say like I'm going to change the position of my head to make sure that happens no matter what. It's pretty hard to have a hunched over chest and keep your head up at the same time. Normally the head will dictate that chest. So if you can't figure that out, move your head up. But otherwise, I think these are these are strong. They'll be a lot stronger whenever you get your knees in it. Yep. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot, Macy. 
Um, definitely send us another video when you uh, go through some of this stuff and we'll uh, take another look at it. Um, Jordan, for all, oh, we've got a, got a comment from uh, Melanie. Uh, I think she said, no worries, Mick. I think that's about messing up her name again. And thanks, <laughs> fellas. Epic backgrounds, she said, with exclamation marks. And she said she uses the app and the notebook and she appreciates it. Thanks, guys. No worries, Melanie. Uh, so we've got Jordan Froughton up next. Is that four or five? Is that what the, the council yeah, is thinking here? Yeah, it's four or five. He's a big, strong guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a big, strong, guy. A big strong guy. Okay. Um, <clears> first thing, I would move your rack position down. That's a little bit high for you. Um, you want to be able to, at the fatigued version of yourself at the end of the set, comfortably get that back in. Um, if you have to do a little bit of a, you know, an eighth of a squat to get it out, that's totally fine. Um, otherwise, these are these are strong. Uh, these are fast. Um, if you're trying to get more on starting strength model, I would recommend moving, moving your stance out a little bit and then leaning over a little bit more aggressively. Um, right now, you're getting a hell of a bounce out of your thighs running into your stomach and then your knees shooting forward at the bottom. Um, you're an athletic guy clearly so it's giving you a really nice rebound out of the bottom um, but it would be a good training tool to have to have a very strict low bar squat in there um, you'll be able to get a good training return out of it plus you'll be able to put a little bit less load on the bar for now when you start um, so consider that as an option um, but otherwise these are these are fast as hell yeah um, again you're a real real strong guy I mean this 405, 405 is flying um, I'm going to be um, looking at this for more of the starting strength model um, because you, you have the bar in a low bar position, um, but you're still doing a high bar style squat. Your knees are going way forward the whole time. You're keeping your chest up. Um, think in, like Alex said, if you're wanting to get to a more starting strength model, um, get your feet out a little bit wider, push your knees out and reach back with your ass. Um, your, your knees are flying way forward. So you're going to have to stop your knees whenever you start sitting your butt back. Um, but if you get some hip drive in here, um, once you get used to it, I think it'll actually benefit your, um, the weight on the bar quite a bit. You, you'll probably be able to start loading that bar. Um, you're already a real strong guy. Um, but go ahead and watch some of our videos on the low bar squat. And, um, if you want to go in that direction, which I think you should, um, start following those models. Mm -hmm. It's, um, for athletes who are already pretty well established in any specific lift, um, it can be really weird to do like a form reset cause it, it'll take a while. Plus you're going to be losing, you know, training time. Um, so the way that I like to do it is to introduce the, the desired form as a variation. So let's put that on your light squat day and then just titrate that in over time, work it in. And eventually, I mean, our version of low bar squat, it's more mechanically sound. It will outpace what you're doing now. Um, so you'll have to realize that that will eventually tip the scales and you can swap them and then kind of your high bar version, it can be your light day. It can be your dynamic effort day. It can be whatever you want it to be in terms of the programming jazz. Um, but if you want to do it, make sure that you are putting it in over time rather than just saying, you know, I went from only squatting this way to only starting the starting strength way. And, you know, I, my squat went down 40 pounds for three weeks, you know, cause there's, there's going to be a period of learning with it. Um, even if you can replicate the technique, just in terms of neurological efficiency, there will be that uptake time. So let that uptake happen on a different or accessory day for your squats. Um, yeah, for most people, they don't have to worry about that, but for someone who's already as strong as you, that's something to think about. Yeah. It's, um, if you, if you've never done a true low bar squat, bending over with, uh, with 405 on your back is, um, <laughs> going to be real weird. Um, but yeah. you're, you're, you're definitely yeah. strong enough to be able to handle that. So, um, yeah, I like what Alex says, just slowly work it in there. And, um, pretty soon you, anything but low bar will feel, will feel inefficient. Hmm. All right. Thanks, Jordan. Good stuff, mate. Uh, Joe Pescato power clean. I think we had Joe on last week as well. <clears throat> catch is pretty good here um i'm not sure if you're intentionally throttling the acceleration off of the ground um but you're competent enough at the catching portion to pull the hell out of it so pull the absolute hell out of it um essentially the problem right now with these is that you're not committing to the jump or not committing to the pull you're not really getting a good extension um think yeah. about finishing through your toes think about jumping as hard as you can um 
I like to think about it, you know, the setup is exactly the same as the deadlift, just with wider hands. Um, the knee position is a little bit different for most people. Um, get as tight as you're going to get for your heaviest deadlift and just launch the bar as fast as you can. It'll normally sort out a lot of problems on its own. Um, but otherwise, I think these are pretty solid start. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking you have a little bit of an arm pull in here. Um, I would definitely keep your arms straight until the actual jump happens. Um, and as far as the bottom position, um, go ahead and angle your toes a little more and push your knees out to where they touch your arms. Um, that, that'll also get you a little bit tighter in the bottom. Um, other than that, I, um, yeah, this is very manageable weight for you. Um, I would fix that bottom position and make sure you are not arm pulling, pulling on the weight. Mm -hmm. Normally I don't, I, so Rusty, you may have a different coaching thought because we tend to coach different demographics, but mm -hmm. normally if I'll see arm pull on like young, healthy ish looking dudes, it's normally because they're trying to pull it slowly or they're overthinking it. You know, it's kind of almost hard to arm pull, or at least, you know, from what I've seen, if you're trying to launch it as fast as humanly possible, because you kind of well, don't I have think, time to actively pop it in. Well, um, I think that's the problem is, is they, they start the arm pull as it's coming off the ground, they, their, their biceps are starting to pull, 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 pull. And then when they hit that jump, it's impossible to have a big jump because the first thing that will happen is your arms will want to go straight again. Um, interesting. And I think unless, this is a late arm pull. I think this is late. Yeah. This is like a pop right at the top. Yeah, it's it's right it's right whenever the jump is happening, which is which is pretty normal. Um, mm -hmm. But you have to keep those triceps tight until you, the the bar actually starts accelerating after the jump, and then your arms. The only thing that your arms need to do is just point your elbows forward. Um, they, there's no active pull, and then they go forward. It's just the bar is accelerating from the jump, and then you just jam them forward. Um, but I'm, I'm seeing a slight arm pull on this. So, um, I would mm -hmm. definitely fix that. Um, if anything, it'll, it'll help your biceps out for not trying to pull on a heavy weight like that. Agreed. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just slowing down the video. I'm trying to see if there actually is, I think there's a little bit, it's not too bad. It, it, it's, it's, it's there. <clears throat> um, it's there enough for me to notice it. And if I'm noticing it, then it needs to be fixed because, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, the, the clean the clean is I, I I have a couple kids cleaning, but um I really don't have a whole lot of um my um clients cleaning right now. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. I have one girl who she um she came over from CrossFit and she is very strong for her size and um, her clean is we we really straightened her clean out and um she's got a really powerful clean now. Are but, you saying um, she didn't learn how to properly? power clean and crossfit is that what you're trying to tell me that's exactly <laughs> what i'm saying oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, her her, her, really her pool off, was all over the place really but now now shame. she's <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so that that's one thing i would keep an eye on is that arm pull yep cool all right joe thanks very much for that um we've got a question in the chat from b winth uh does grip width vary from incline slash flat slash decline bench press Um, uh, yes, if your arch is going to change, um, it's going to depend flexibility wise, but it really shouldn't change that much. It really should not change that much. Uh, Rip goes on about it in the book. I'm not sure if it's in practical programming or if it's in the blue book about decline and incline bench. But if you're pressing, um, you don't need to incline bench really. Uh, if you're doing decline bench, that's kind of a big like shrug emoji. I'm not sure why you're doing that. Yeah. Unless you're like a very advanced bencher. Um, and you're trying to get a little more juice out of it. Um, but grip width, I would say, for the most part, is going to stay exactly the same. I, I agree with that. Um, I've never really had to. I, again, unless there's actually um, a reason why we're having to do one over the other. Like if someone can't bench because they have shoulder mobility problems, yeah, their their grip's probably going to be different from their press on the, if they were doing some incline. Um, but um, yeah, I've never really had to deal with um, changing anybody's grip who has full range of motion or has healthy shoulders. All right, there you go. How's your incline bench coming along, Rusty? Uh, hell, if I know. I haven't inclined benched in probably ten years. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty slow then. Pressed. Pretty slow. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's probably probably not that great. Uh, I inclined benched last Tuesday, and it was very fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's that word there's that word with fun and training i tell yeah, my kids all i had time, a, we're not here to have fun we're here to get strong <laughs> i had an absolute blast the every rep 
<laughs> See, that's the thing. I believe you when you say that because you're weird. Oh, you know what? Actually, I also inclined bench today, but it was with dumbbells. So that's a separate <laughs> barbells. That was last Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, we've got another video from Joe, his bench press. I don't hate these. <laughs> you really do sound like Riff. <laughs> you just can't be positive about it, so it's double negative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't hate them. Um, no, I think these are pretty solid. Um, I'm not seeing too much that um, I would fix. Uh, maybe keeping your uh, scapulas retracted the whole time because I'm seeing a little bit of movement whenever you take that breath. Just keep pinching them the whole time with that big chest. But um, other than that, these um, I think these look pretty great. What do you think, Alex? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't like the phrase, I don't hate these. Because I realized I was using that, and people were we like, do you hate the rest of my lifts? <laughs> you hate everything else I'm doing when you don't say this. Um, no, but I like these. We'll go with that one. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think there's, I don't think there's too much to change. Yeah. So with um question about the scapula retraction, because I have this issue when I'm on bench, I always find my right scapula always tends to just, you know, I don't know what the word is, technical term for it is, but I call it flopping out. Um, what is a good cue or a good way to, to fix that? Uh, the easiest way that I found correction um, is to stop thinking about pressing the bar as far. Normally you're going to find people unpack their shoulders mm -hmm. whenever they go for like an extra inch of motion. Um, and, you know, for, I, I don't want to have any theories about handedness, but normally it's on people's dominant hands, or at least I've seen so far, is that they'll try and press an extra half an inch and it will slowly get a little bit looser and looser as the set goes on. Um, so normally I'll just have people think about cutting the range of motion off about an inch or two early and then just finishing it with the elbows. I'll tell everybody to finish it with the elbows rather than finishing it by pushing your shoulder forward. Um, but yeah, ideally you want little T-Rex arms for the bench. So just try and make yeah. that happen. Yeah, um, when I I experience um, my kids more than anything when I'm first teaching them how to bench, where they where they want to do that, they want to shrug forward with the with the bar. Um, and what I keep telling them over and over again, uh, when I see that um, over and over on every rep as they're coming up, I keep telling them pinch a pencil with your shoulders. So that I try and get them to visualize a pencil between the shoulder blades and they're pinching it the entire time they're pushing. So I'll, I'll just say pinch, 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 pinch the entire time. And generally they, they, they pick up on that pretty quick. I found one solution is going shirtless because then, then your, uh, <laughs> your skin kind of sticks to the bench and it doesn't allow you to actually <laughs> sl the slide go. off. So you might want to try that with your uh, kids. At <laughs> no, see, there's, a, there's a lot of things going on. Um, <laughs> with uh, certain people getting in trouble over here. I don't need to tell my kids to take their shirts off. <laughs> yeah, with those glasses, Rusty, that's not a movie. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. You need to get the little mustache going then, Rusty. <laughs> uh, it'll be uh, Chris Henson on the next background, <laughs> peeking over my shoulder. You, you, who is Chris Henson? You guys mentioned that before the thing started. He's the Dateline guy that was catching all the pedos. Do you not have that in Australia? Not that I've seen. Probably, it's probably all right, on TV so somewhere. essentially... What the premise of the show is, is that you have a bunch of people who are police or are related to the police pretending to be children online, having cyber sex with adults. Now, instead oh. of going through the proper legal channels to arrest them, they'll have them show up to a house and then ambush them with cameras. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It is hilarious. It is absolutely hilarious. Type in, type, when we get done with this, go on YouTube, type in best of Chris, Chris Hansen uh, dateline to, yeah. to catch a predator. Is that going to, is that going to flag me with the authorities? No, 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 it's, it's great. no, it's great. No, it's great. No, if it's I'm like, it's like we like... have like baseball and to catch a predator. Those are like our top two. <laughs> That's it too. Yeah. National pastimes. <laughs> The, the police were involved the first like two seasons, but then all the cases were getting thrown out for entrapment. So the police are like, we can't do this anymore. So they slowly, so they slowly got out of it. I think. <laughs> all, right. all right. Yeah. Don't ask. The, okay. Don't ask you kids to take their shirts off, Rusty. That's a that's a terrible suggestion. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, yeah that was a horrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> uh, Joe left a comment in the chat. Thanks very much for the comments. We'll apply your suggestions. I have found out that some reps are good and some not that good. Okay. 
Yeah, w- welcome to lifting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, just, that's, just, that's just being a weightlifter. <laughs> it's a deep philosophical comment. Some reps good, some rep bad. Uh, uh, Jason Kelly, Power Clean, is up next. I'm loving all the power clean. Very creative solution to prop the bar up. I like it. Yeah. I would recommend uh, deadlifting for a little bit longer and then yeah. starting this with, I would say, at least 95 pounds. Um, yeah. You're thinking about the clean a lot, which is cool, um, but there's kind of a certain weight threshold that you need to get to to be able to feel it because the bar kind of has to be able to behave on its own so you can tell if it's staying on a vertical bar path. Cause that's kind of your true gauge for what's happening in the clean. If it is, I think this is 55 pounds and you can reverse curl it all day in any direction. You won't really get a good read on what you're doing in relationship to how it's affecting the bar. Um, wait for it to get a little bit heavier. Um, I, frankly, I think you're probably strong enough just to have that be right now. You don't need to start your LP. It cleans at, you know, 45 pounds. Um, but put some plates on there so that it can be an independent object. Uh, and, you know, then you'll get a better read on what you need to do. Yeah, yeah if, you're a, if you're cleaning a weight and then as you're pulling, it's going above your head. And then you're having to catch it. It is way too light. Um, so I, I agree. I think you need to spend some time deadlifting, getting your deadlift form down and then revisit the clean um, because there, there are a lot of things that uh, we can't really coach you on unless that weight is actually, as he said, behaving on its own as you're pulling on it. Um, you're, you're able to manhandle this weight and um, it's, it's going to be real hard to um, coach off of that. But if I was coaching and just the initial setup, I would definitely bring your feet in, um, bring your feet in a little bit closer and again, because this weight is so light, you're straight up arm pulling it. And you can normally tell because elbows when the arm pull happens will go straight out. And then you're curling them in this big loop whenever they should come here and then immediately jam forward. So, um, yeah, um, spend some time deadlift and get your deadlift up, get some weight on this bar and uh, then revisit it. Mm-hmm. As a general note, I think your deadlift stance is probably this same exact stance, too pull that yeah. stance in. You're going to have a lot easier time. Um, when yeah. you're looking at your deadlift from the front, you want your arms to hang down as vertically as possible. So try and make that happen on the deadlift. Um, and then, you know, yeah, do that for a few weeks and keep sending in, uh, send in a deadlift video, I would say. I would yeah, like to see I how that I was going to suggest that. Yeah, mm. I was yeah. going to suggest that. Awesome. <clears throat> Thanks, Jason. I've got another video from Jason, his squat video. It would have been funny if that was his deadlift right after. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing. His, he's got that music cranking again. I think uh, Macy is his wife, perhaps. Oh, hey. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Rusty, you can take this away. Um, yeah. So this is this is kind of an odd suggestion, but it's gonna be my first one. Get rid of that carpet underneath your um your uh, squat rack. Um, go to like. Atwoods or any kind of um, farming place, they'll they'll carry they'll they normally carry these rubber mats that they that they line um, horse trailers with. Put some of those under there. Put like a ply, piece of plywood under there. Put some horse mats on there. Some rubber mats. Um, the the carpet just isn't a good surface to be squatting on, especially if it's um, it's a soft carpet. Um, you're kind of negating a lot of what your what your lifters are doing for you. Um, that's my. First thing, now I'm going to actually watch the squats. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have a very promising build for squats. Yeah. I think yeah. if you can nail a few technique things down, you're going to be out squatting everybody and their mom. Um, first thing is that you guys seem to have taught each other the same upper back position. Um, what needs to happen here is that your shoulders need to actively shrug backwards. It's probably not going to happen in reality, but think about it intention-wise, almost like you're packing your shoulders for the bench. So you want to push your sternum in front of you and then pull your shoulder blades behind you. Think about just kind of rowing it backwards, and you'll create a big shelf of muscle, almost like a notch or a groove for that bar to sit in. Um, Right now, you're just soft, and you're hunched over a little bit, and it's affecting the mechanics on the rest. Um, Fix the upper back position. A good article on that is identifying thoracic extension in the squat. Check that out. Um, all of the rip fixes your squat grip videos are great on that too. Even if he's just working on the hands, it will by proxy fix what's going on with the chest position. Um, so I would start there and then I would move your stance out a little bit. I would say about an inch on each side. 
um, and then just stack a bunch of plates on. I think the rest of it's it's solid enough. Um, I think he's getting on his toes a little bit. He's a little bit forward on everything. Um, I think that's the new stance. Yeah, yeah. Once once you get your stance mm-hmm. out a little bit, you'll be able to make a little room for your um, for your stomach when you push your knees out, and that will allow you to get your hips back and get on your heels a little bit more. And when you're on your heels a little bit more in that bottom, if you keep your hips back, then you can drive them straight up and actually get some hip drive out of there. Um, but yeah, you're 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 a pretty you're a decently strong guy. So um, uh, once you fix those little problems, you'll probably be able to load load some more weight on there, no problem. All right. Good work, Jason. Uh, Etienne, Sh- oh God, Sh- Chowdron squat, Chowdron, Chowdron. Good job, good job. He yeah. sounds like a transformer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Some guys He's just going look- pretty early two thousands with the music. Oh, hang on, oh, I've got no sound. Let's have a listen. I don't know what band this is, but. I'm thinking 2003. Hmm. Rusty, I, who is it? I, I don't know. I feel like this is your kind of music, Rusty. I don't know if that's, that's like, true. That's or like not. it's like mid 2000s. Um, it's like Blink 182 or something. No, it's, it, the, the guitars are doing a little bit too much for Blink 182, but uh, I don't know. I don't know this band. <laughs> <laughs> All right, auto spot. Yeah. Hard. Um, you know, the, the, you're, you're kind of having the, uh, um, the opposite problem of not letting your knees go forward enough. And if you actually look at the, at your toes, they're coming up on your way down and they're kind of doing this number. So you need to get your knees a little more forward and bend over a little bit more and keep that bar over the midfoot and keeping good balance. <laughs> um, you're, you're kind of rushing a little bit. So it's, you're very, you stop and then you turn it around. Um, take a big breath, get your knees out, reach back with your hips. And if you're in a good position, you'll feel that bounce out of your hips and you can drive them straight up. But a lot of that's going to be your knees getting forward in the beginning. Um, so you're in good balance for that hip drive. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So the, the heel balance, I think is a consequence of the stance. Your toe angle is very severe. It's past 45 degrees. Um, pull your toes in a little bit and then your knees will probably track more naturally. Um, now, if you just pause this video at the front or really at any point in between reps, you'll notice that your head is entirely forward of the rest of your body. Like it's just a separate entity. Pull your head back over your shoulders. Your torso angle will start making a little bit more sense. Um, the knees will probably track a little bit better too. I don't want you to think about shoving your head forward to get your shoulders back. The shoulders back can happen with your head over your shoulders. Um, fix your toe angle. That'll probably fix most of the things. The next thing get your head back over your shoulders. That'll probably fix the rest. Um, but otherwise these seem decently strong. You're bracing the hell out of it, which is always good to see. Um, so it's pretty good. Yep. Let us know <clears throat> what band that was to settle that debate. Etienne. <laughs> uh, Etienne. Etienne. We French, I'm guessing. Uh, oh, Cole Muth sent in another video. I don't know what the this classic. is. Oh, he's got a mask on this week. They've been enforcing mm. at his gym. They've been enforcing it. <clears throat> ah, it's depressing. Widen up your stance, Cole, to start. Yeah. If you see yourself yeah. kind of wobbling around a little bit, um, just widen that up. It'll make your life easier. Uh, think about taking your squat stance, um, and then I'll let Rusty talk about wrists and hips and, <laughs> and, and then, all that other fun And the man stuff. bun in the background. <laughs> Here hey, we go. hey, let's let's not talk too much shit about the man bun, Nick. <laughs> that that right. guy's gonna be a hell of a squatter, hell of a two seventy five. Right. He may already be two ninety five. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely get your get your stance out. You're you're rocking um, you're rocking back, and uh, your toes are coming up. That tells me you're not in good balance. So get your stance out. Um, as far as your your wrist, right? We want a good compression grip. You don't want your wrist to curl back too much. So what I, what I like to yell at my kids because they're the ones that tend to have the most problem with this is say knuckles up. And you don't want them straight up and down because then that's going to put the bar directly on your thumb. Um, you, there's going to be a slight cant. That's a neutral wrist, okay? Um, so definitely get your, get your um, wrist more neutral. Squeeze your elbows in and forward and tight. Um, you want to kind of have the sensation that you're resting your arms on your lats. Um, that's not what's happening, but that's the sensation that you get whenever you're real tight and in. And then with the wider stance, you can probably push your hips out a little bit more, get that good back angle and bounce the bar. 
drive straight up, aim for your nose, and then as soon as you clear your head, stand nice and tall, big, big shrug. Um, you do all that, and you're going to have a pretty – you'll probably be able to load some more weight on there, and um, yeah, you'll probably have a pretty decent um, press. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure the guy in the back is intentionally – I think he's looking at you as you're doing this. It's because he's rubbing his belly, and he's spinning his neck around for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now I'm really watching him. And let, let's it's just like straight. a – that is not a man bun. That it looks more like an onion. It's like his, it's like this this long, and um, it's just, it, that's not a good look. How close do you think he was to coming over and, and trying to spot Cole? Like I feel like that was the next step in this in this video. <laughs> Hands on the chest. I got you, bro. I got you. He's he, he's asserting his dominance. Is what it is. He's staring him down and rubbing his belly. Yeah, oh, he's got I will a, say that guy had. Killer calves. I don't know if you checked that out, but the uh, the bodybuilder in me that. scoped the calves out fairly immediately. Um, is that yeah, all dang- the things? That, what was that, Rusty? Is that a dangly earring? I think it might be a oh, headphone. I think it might be headphones. Is a headphone? Okay, okay. Yeah. I was gonna get really upset. <laughs> <laughs> so, any, any more feedback for Cole? <laughs> uh, on, the, on the floor. Good. Um, yeah, widen the stance up. You're athletic enough to create a bounce in areas where you shouldn't be, so that's good. <clears throat> um, think about squeezing your knees as tight as you can, almost like they're going to cramp with that wider stance. Because whenever the stance goes out, if you adjust it, people have the tendency to bend their knees and whatever that new stance is. So really focus on your knees as you're doing that. Um, one thing, I think you may need to pronate your hands a little bit more, internally rotate them a little bit more. I think you're a little bit straight on right now, which is why the wrist is going back so much pull that thumb down when you're setting up, kind of aim them both down and together um, to help that get set up. But otherwise, I think that should be fine. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, we got an answer about the music from the previous video. Uh, Ooh, what do we got? Was it? It's uh, Newfound Glory. Oh, Newfound man. Glory. That's Newfound All right, it's on the list. Oh, I'm going to be bodybuilding that song tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are we up to? Uh, Austin Murphy Park. I think we had him on last week as well. He looks like he he might be from the Crips, Alex. He might have a. He uh, left. Alex give... is so excited about that sweatband. <laughs> <laughs> Brothers of the headband, really. Hey, uh, <laughs> uh, Alex is uh, what? What is? What's that sweater he's got on? I can't tell. It looks like a. Well, it's gonna looks like an Australian football jersey, but then I saw a big American flag on it, so I'm guessing it's probably not. Anyway, man, we are getting sidetracked today. <laughs> it's usually me. Uh, don't worry, guys. I'm watching the squad. Okay, good. <laughs> um, honestly, I mean, there's some fine tuning that needs to go on. These aren't these aren't horrible. Um, there's a little bit of fine tuning that needs to go on. I think you need to be a little bit tighter um, in the bottom of the squad, especially. Um, you're squatting way too deep. Um, you're you're not holding your hips back in the bottom. You're letting them go back as you come as you come down, and then whenever you get to a certain spot, they come in. You want to hold them back. Let your knees go to about where they are in the bottom in the very beginning. Freeze them and keep sitting back. That means you're probably going to bend over a little more than you want to, um, but that's fine. Just keep your hips back, um, and then drive them straight up once you get to the bottom. Um, Get some lifters, for sure. Um, and, uh, yeah, what do you think, Alex? Um, I'm not... As a general note, move those plates out so you can get a little bit of a better grip position, like I suggested last mm-hmm. time. These do look a lot better than they did the last time. Uh, it's yeah. a little bit too deep. Um, otherwise, I think the rest of the problems should solve them solve themselves once you can move your hands out just a tad. Um, if you have shaved all of your facial hair and have a mustache and are wearing a headband and a tank top, you need to embrace the bodybuilding lifestyle. <laughs> Do not fall for the lies of training is only three sets and you just get in and get out and you spend the rest of your time living your life. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Stay in the gym for two and a half hours every session. If you can do an AM, PM session like me, perfect. But if you're this far in, if you're at headband and mustache, you got to embrace. You got to embrace the bodybuilding lifestyle. I think. <laughs> I think it's a mistake. I'm going to go not take advantage of. It. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say <clears throat> that is not a tank top. That is an Australian football jersey of my team, the Collingwood Magpies. That's what I'm. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that's what he's wearing. There's an American flag on it. There? There's also an Australian flag underneath it. Um, uh, so, uh, and our team has an American player, and I reckon he's bought the 
special American jersey version of it. So there you go. Even cooler. Yeah. Even cooler at that. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Austin, yeah. Also, um, the music is like inspirational '80s music. So I think you really have, you're committing to the bit. If this song it sounds is like an Super Nintendo music. '80s. Thing. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Oh, it is too. It is. It's from one of those 80s music. <laughs> yeah, it's like exactly. a montage. Yeah, it should be a montage. It's it should montage. be a montage right now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Austin, if you, it, cut, cut off about an inch of your depth. I think your hips are in a good position until you get too deep and then they curl in. <clears throat> so cut an inch off your depth. That probably will help keep your hips back. And um, quit curling your head down. Get your head, head a little more neutral and just maintain that the entire squat. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, fix, fix those two things. And I think it'll be all right. Cool. All right, Austin. Good work, mate. Uh, I've got a couple of videos now from Abdul Aziz. So I'll watch Abdul Aziz two. They return the second video. All right. All right. This is so going to be a deadlift or a power clean? This is a, this is a deadlift, um, 30, 33 minutes or seconds into it. 33 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like 33 minutes. <laughs> well, I'm watching the whole thing, so uh, I'm not fast. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm starting to second. Oh. Okay, so this is still quite light for you. Um, so you actually have your hips into the near perfect position. You're in an excellent setup. And at the moment in time when you needed to stop, freeze everything, and start to extend your back, you pushed your hips down and let your knees come forward. Um, think about pushing your shoulders and your hips up to the ceiling at the same time. They're almost going to drift up and backwards together in unison. And your shins, think about keeping them relatively vertical. Um, right now, the hips are too low and everything is kind of off as a consequence of that. Um, follow the five-step setup to a T. As soon as your shins are on the bar and you've set your hips in the correct position, don't move them ever again. Just extend your back from that point on. Um, but otherwise, these still look, you know, basically just like a light warm up for you. So, um, I agree totally. The only um, other thing that I would add to that is um, set that bar down quicker. Don't get in the habit of lowering it slow. Get it down. Get it back down because once you stand up all the way, the the hard part of lift is done. Now it's time to reset for your next one. So get that weight down. Set it down loud. Make some noise. Then reset up and then pull again. All right, there you go, Abdul. Uh, so Abdul has his one. I don't know what this one is. Uh, it looks like a bench with an empty bar. It's going to be real hard to coach with an empty bar. I don't know if you'll need wrist wraps. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, was gonna, <laughs> I didn't want to say it. Is he going to bench with his feet up on the bench? Oh, God, I hope so. No, no. No, he's unracking like a pro. Whoa. No, no, the feet come down. Before oh, the that's, that's a shame. so disappointing. Yeah. Um, yeah, Aziz, uh, you got some things to fix on your bench. Um, again, with this with this bar, you're able to put it in any position you want to because it's it's so light. That's why you're able to touch pretty much your stomach. Um, so you've got this real long arc that just goes all the way across your body. Um, aim for right below your nipples. And uh, bring that bar in a straight line back below your nipples and then press straight up to your shoulders. Um, everything else looks pretty good. Now, that bench is really tall, so that's why you're having to put your toes on the ground. Get some plates and put plates underneath your legs so you can put your feet flat down. Um, but it's really hard to really analyze this with it being so light. But you're, you're really bringing that bar all the way down to your stomach whenever you need to be going straight for your um, right below your nipples. Yeah, the reps get a little bit better as they go on. They get higher. Yeah, they do. Rep one yeah. is, is pretty drastic. Um, yeah. yeah, I think the... I don't know if you'll need that elaborate of a setup on everything. Um, as you lay down with your feet already on the ground, just bring your shoulders up to your ears, back behind you as much as you can, then down to your waist. That's 95% of it for almost basically everybody. So you don't really need to worry about it much past that. Um I would over cue this and think about touching slightly uh, higher than your nipples. So like basically, mm -hmm. so you have your nipple line, I would aim like an inch above that. You know, all we know is that you have a proclivity to go way too low. So over correct, try to go a little bit higher than you need to. You'll probably land at a good point. Um, but other than that, yeah, add some weight and we'll see how it goes. Um, yes. Send in a video after, after yeah. getting to a work set because, uh, 
you know, we can eyeball the empty bar all we want, but until there's weight on there, it's really hard to coach it. Hmm. Yeah. As a general note, if you are wearing your wrist wraps because of wrist discomfort, it's probably some way that you're configuring your grip rather than the load because 45 pounds likely wouldn't really hurt your wrist unless you've just had some hyper recent wrist injury. Um, if you're just wearing them for fashion, that's cool. Keep going. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, matching headband as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, Everybody else accessorizes. We should be able to as well. <laughs> uh, so we're looking at his squat video now, which is um, just Abdulaziz, the name of the file. I hope this is his living room because there's just a TV set up in there. That'd be <laughs> really cool. That is a very white room. Yeah. I'm guessing Abdul is somewhere in the Middle East. It's, mm-hmm. it's, just, it's just a ridiculously clean apartment oh, yeah. or house he's living in. Mm-hmm. He's living in the Matrix. <laughs> it's still in the rack for me, so. Yeah, I'm up to about 40 seconds. He's still setting up. Yeah, he's still thinking about life. <laughs> is he going to squat? Oh, there he goes. All right. Hang on. Yeah, you guys are ahead of me. So. There it is. <laughs> Finally. he it, it, For a minute there, there, it looked like he was going to re-rack it. <laughs> he just stood up. <laughs> he thought about it. He's like, I don't really like this. <laughs> uh. All right, Abdul. Um, got a few things to fix, man. Um, so we, uh, we obviously coached a low bar, which means you're going to bend over a little bit more than you want to because we want to get your back involved. You're trying to look straight up, kind of like a high bar. And then you're squatting straight down, trying to keep your chest up. You need to let your knees come forward a little bit more. Bend over, push your hips back, look down, look about six feet in front of you, and keep keep your eyes on that spot. Um, other than that, um, I mean, you got you got some work to do. Um, fix your gaze; that that'll help a lot of things out. And then um, bend over a little more. I would honestly bet that just fixing the gaze would get this to like B plus. And you'd yeah. be totally fine. Do that. Yeah. Take another video. Um, try and get the walkout to be a little bit more succinct. Not for like the mm-hmm. video's sake, but just for your own sake. When that's heavier, you will not want to stand there for a while. Um, yeah, even yeah. if you do want to stand there for a while, the quality of your squat will suffer because your upper back will get increasingly more tired. So try and make that relatively short. Um, I can't really tell if those are lifting shoes or not. Um, I don't think they are, um, but some lifters would probably help your knees get into a better position right off the bat. Um, but otherwise, I think these are a good start. Uh, just yep. shoot your head down. Um, if you're having a hard time with it, physically put a shiny object there. Right on a piece of paper, look here. Um, do whatever you need to. Just make sure that it's still aimed down about three or four feet in front of you. I think- um, hey, some people that I've had issues with uh, keeping their head down, um, what has helped too is, uh, like a t-shirt wadded up, put it underneath your chin or a tennis ball and hold it there on your warm ups. That'll help train you to keep your, keep your head down a little bit. Um, but yeah, that, that might be something that'll help you out. Like a gag ball. It's got the little strap as well. So it would hold, <laughs> yeah. it would just hold in place. <laughs> Yeah, the other room in Abdul's apartment is entirely black, and it's filled with those things. (laughs) So he has the living room, it's totally white, bedroom completely black. All right, thanks, Abdul. We did it, guys. We got through all those videos. I didn't think we'd do it in an hour, but there we're right on an hour. We did it. We're getting real good at keeping it right on an hour. We are. Yeah. Does that mean we need to get more videos? Is that what you're saying? No, an hour's perfect. <laughs> I think I, I seem to have a good internal clock on how much to shit post each time. Yeah. <laughs> like yes. control that time. I think we should be fine. Yeah. No, we did it. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Is there anything else? Anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Any? All good. Alex. No, um, yeah. If you, if you want to argue about programming, uh, email me. My website will be in the description. I will entertain all arguments about programming at any given time. So and on, and go for it. On Reddit as well. Well, something yeah, I've taken a little bit of a sabbatical from Reddit recently. <laughs> I've just been too busy. I've been too busy. I've, I have my, my alarm set to get back to it uh, starting tomorrow, actually. So I'll be the, back. The latest argument on there at the moment is about um, Rip was saying that the worst way to kind of screw up your training is by doing 100 air squats. And people are actually mm-hmm. debating about... Uh, <laughs> So what do, what do you reckon? 100 air squats? Is that uh, thoughts, Alex? 
Um, well, it depends on when, you know, if you're, if you're a tested event, if the sport that you're doing is the hundred air squat sport, probably that sounds fun. Um, that doesn't sound like a sport that a lot of people would watch or do. So if it's not your tested event, I don't know why you would be doing it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah even from the bodybuilding perspective, do some leg extension, man. Yeah, do you gotta some get a good way to hundred reps. Is, you're going to get a decent pump. I think I, I posted, I posted in That's that, it. I posted in the thread and I said, why don't you try doing 100 air squats and let us know how you feel the next day? That was, uh, <laughs> that was my little comment. Um, yeah. All right. Well, uh, if, yeah, sorry. If you want to um, slide in my DMs and argue about programming, it's <laughs> Russ underscore strength underscore training at, or no, there's no at, it's just the uh, Instagram. But um, I'm not going to argue with you. You can just send arguments my way and I'll read them and laugh. So <laughs> I got a feeling you never check Rusty. your DMs, Rusty. I, I do every now and then to make uh-huh. sure there isn't some honey sliding in there, and generally there's not. So <laughs> I'm just wasting my time. It's just guys coming in saying, "Hey man, <laughs> nice, nice shoulders." <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, the Tampa Pro was uh, a few days ago as well for bodybuilding. So if you want to talk about the results with Rusty, send him pictures of the posing yep. routines. Slide yep. into his DMs that way as well. I think that's another me, surefire posing. <laughs> I think, well, look, this is a perfect opportunity for you guys to have a pose-off. You know, you got your tank top on, Rusty. Uh, <laughs> are we going to do a pose-off right now to finish this live yeah, stream? You know, I'm, I'm pretty fluffy right now, so I think Alex <laughs> is going to win the ball. All right, maybe we'll save that for next week. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thanks a lot, fellas. Thanks for your time, and, um, yeah, we'll catch up with you uh, next week. All right, All right. see you, boys. Bye, see ya, bye. Bye. bye.